And now let's see if I hit the buttons. Nothing happens. Well, that's very disappointing. Well, let's get out the meter and see what we can figure out. Hello, and welcome to Humanity Junction, where the big city intersects with humans. Today I'm going to work on a project where I test whether I can get a button push to trigger the uh, DR4088LN. The DR48LN is a local net current sensing detection device. Uh, it's usually used for block detection for locomotives or with freight cars with resistors in them across the wheels. I'm using it slightly outside what it's designed for. My intention is to use it for button pushes. My goal is to program in JMRI so that when I push a button, it sends a trigger to JMRI, which then runs a sequence of additional events. This resistor should be a 75k ohm resistor. So I did the math and at the 15 volts coming in that should give me the correct the correct amperage that I want for current sensing. So what I have here is the black wire here is my common wire and I'm going to attach the resistor to the common wire and then these four wires right here all go to buttons on the other side of my T-Track module which I'll show you a little bit later and by pushing each of those buttons it'll connect the circuit through the common the common with the resistor and then I should see on the computer uh, it'll pop up and I will get the I will get an indication that the button's been pressed. Let's actually first go through and show how that works. So the plan is that I have this little background apartment building it's gonna cover up all of the buttons from the front uh, but there are my buttons and my switches uh, these switches turn off the power to the tracks uh, this direction is for the DR5000 and I do have uh, the original Kato Unitrack connectors underneath and if you flip it this way you can run it off of the Kato Unitrack connectors uh, for this though we're gonna run all the tracks off the DR5000 uh, so each of these buttons I have wired into the current sensing device. The theory is by pressing this button, we'll see it pop up on the screen. So to do a test to see what's going to happen with the current sensing, I have this uh, Bachman N-Scale NW2 switcher. It's a New York Central 8769. If we go and look at the computer, you'll see that when I put the train on the track and then I turn on the track power you can see the little checkbox uh, pops up on the computer screen and if I remove it checkbox goes away I put it back on checkbox comes back if I move it to the other track you'll see that the checkbox comes up in a different place uh, so the goal is going to be that when I press the buttons, just like putting the train car on the track, I'm going to see one of those check boxes pop up. I'll go over the software that I'm using uh, a little bit later in more detail. Uh, this is the DR5000 software from Digikais. So just to point out a couple of the things underneath the module real quickly, um, here are the Kato Unitrack connectors I was talking about. I have uh, one, two, and program track my siding is my program track got the current sensor here uh, this is a digitrax ds51 decoder for a Kato turnout this is the nce cp6 uh, which is the circuit protector from nce uh, digikai's dr4088lncs uh, if we come over here this is just a terminal block uh, just gives gives me a little strain relief coming in to the module. So let's move forward, uh, start doing a little soldering and see if we can't make this work. I am by no means an expert in soldering, so please, please do not use my soldering as an example of how to solder. This is just how I do it based on my limited experience. Got a little 6040 solder, got some flux right here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a wire to the resistor. Get a little solder on the wire I'm going to 
adding to the resistor. Now if I take these, get them close enough together, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a twist here just to help keep things together while I'm soldering it. So I've twisted the wires together. I'm just going to heat this up and just add a little solder in here. I'm going to take some heat shrink tubing and just throw it over the top of this just to protect that wire connection a bit. And I almost forgot, get your heat shrink tubing on before you solder the wires together. My little makeshift helping hand and we'll just twist this on here. Now I'm just going to take and we'll add a little bit of solder. And luckily that should be it for the soldering. So now the next thing that I need to do is connect this new common wire with the resistor uh, to my common here. You'll notice on the DR4888LNCS, there's actually two commons. Um, I actually have this running back to two separate circuits on the CP6. Uh, track power is coming into the CP6 and then I'm splitting it up. So you have one through eight on one circuit and nine through 16 on the other circuit. Use my new favorite wire strippers. Gonna strip that back. And I'm just gonna trim that down a little bit shorter so that it fits nicer. And with my little screwdriver here, I'll open this up. So now I've got the resistor on the common wire which runs up here to the switches all of the commons are jumped together and then I've got individual red wires coming back for each of the different uh, sensing sections 10 11 12 and 13 so now what we're gonna do is we'll flip this back over get the track power hooked back up and using our little New York Central uh, test locomotive here Let's just confirm that, uh, just confirm, there we go. So we're getting our little check boxes, and now let's see if I hit the buttons. Nothing happens. Well, that's very disappointing. Well, let's get out the meter and see what we can figure out. First thing we'll do is we'll just check to see if we've got resistance. So it goes from 4.72 kilo ohms. When I press the button, it drops. So here's an interesting question. If I meter it across the track. All right, so this is on the track and this is on the buttons. So they're all reading the same with nothing connected. And then when I push the button, when I push the button, it cuts in half. All right, well, let's see if we can figure out what happens when the train is on the track. Touch the car, I get the X popped up. It goes to minus 50 ohms. So what I think I just found out is that I'm going to need a lot more resistance. When I initially started this project, I thought I knew what I needed to do to get a button press to detect current on the 4088LN. Um, this didn't work. I'm sure I've made a fairly simple mistake. 
uh, at this time, I don't know what the mistake is. So I'm going to post this video and I'm hoping that if you follow along through the video, you'll see what I did wrong and you'll know what I need to do to fix it. Thank you for watching and please leave any comments or questions below. Please subscribe so that you can follow along with my project. And have a great day.